Now I gotta ride or die of a 2016 VW GTI Club Sport. These things are insane, just from the factory. I've recently shot the Mark 8 and was so impressed that I had to try and find a Mark 7 variant, but this one's got a little bit more sauce. Just drop into um, second gear. <laughs> this one is running a hybrid turbo 482 brake horsepower what we're gonna do like we do on every awesome car is to take it down a fantastic road so join me as we take this thing down some b roads and see what putting 482 brake horsepower through the front wheels of a mark 7 gti club sport with the dsg box is like as ever guys make sure you like share and subscribe but onwards to the b roads First, this is an awesome GTI built hybrid turboed GTI Club Sport Mark 7 variant. This is probably my favorite golf of the recent years. I'm a Mark 5 Golf GTI fan through and through. After that, though, it is 100% the Mark 7 Club Sport. It's such a cool version of the GTI. Again, GTI fanboy forever and ever. I'll always be a GTI fanboy, but this is the more hyped up variant from the factory wearing a number 66 plaque of the edition 40 generation of course they do uh, an edition 25 and an edition 30 and all that sort of stuff in the previous mark 5 and mark 4 generations a car that still commands a very large premium i've noticed you can get a gti you know mark 7 for around say 13 14 15 grand for one that's not too bad these ones are still commanding quite a lot of money more than your base model gti the cheapest variant i found of a mark 7 club sport that i could find before actually coming and picking this car it was around 21 22 thousand pounds so they've definitely held their price in the market even over the traditional R that you would obviously go and get, I would always say drive a GTI before you go and buy an R. Because if you want a driver's car, if you want a proper, awesome, just feeling car, go for the GTI. Of course, if you want to launch and have four wheel drive and stuff, you go for the R. This is bang in the middle where you've got the power, you've got the more hyped up variant of this Mark 7 chassis, but it's got a bit more sauce it's not quite the gti being overshadowed by the r i think the club sport overshadows the r all day long especially a car like this that's got 482 brake horsepower insane amount of power to be pushing through this front wheel drive dsg golf i i am again a gti fanboy so a car like this speaks to me volumes It drives unbelievable. In fact, even at this power, I do feel that this car can actually cope with its power gains. Now, ownership, what's it like to own this? Well, the reality is this has had north of 10,000 pounds worth of modifications 
up on it. So it's got a lot of mods on it. Awesome GTI did the hybrid turbo system with APR stage three remap to go with the Wagner intercooler, the R600 intake. It's got basically everything you could ever want to have this package running this sort of power day in, day out. It's had the money thrown at it. It's got a nice set of APR wheels on it as well, which I think finish off this car. Obviously the club sport from the factory was a fantastic looking thing. I love the way the stripes are on it and the, the bigger grills on the front with the wing out the back. This one's just been taken up to 11 and I think it wears the wheels, the tire writing, mud flaps, the stripes, everything so, so well. This has probably got to be my favorite Mark 7 I've ever seen. It just looks just epic. It looks epic and it performs in the same way with that hybrid turbo IS38. Do you know what it is, right, about this? Just a right bit of me, this guy, it really is. I'll say this now, I nearly bought a Mark 7 GTI prior to me buying my RS3, obviously because of a five bottle went to the RS3. But from a prospective buyer's point of view, I've already sort of been down this road where I ummed and ahed, looked at the prices of club sports, wondered why there were more money, don't get me wrong, but driving it today, mate, what a absolute machine that has been created here. I know the club sports are bloody good from the factory. This one though. <laughs> Although it's got all of its, you know, cats and boxes and stuff, it still makes just the most mental noises. I think it's, it's relatively understated in that sense. It's not loud, you know, brash, fire-breathing thing going down the road, but it would surprise a lot of cars, this thing. Just not necessarily in the way the power comes on. It's very, very powerful for a front-wheel drive car, I feel. But the way you can use that power, literally in any aspect of you driving this thing, I don't think it's too over the top. I did sort of come into this and say to the owner, you know, it's a lot of power to be putting through the front wheels. Can it cope with it? Can it steer and react in the same way? And he was like, yeah, go and drive it and see what you think. And after driving this, you know, the best part of the last hour, just, you know, enjoying it, the, the chassis and the way the club sport is, is made from the factory can take this power gain all day, every day. A build like this is just something that you aspire to take your car to. It's been so well done, so well set up. The power comes in unbelievably well, right down in, you know, two, two and a half thousand RPM you can be at, and it will just send you down the road, this thing. <laughs> now there's slight torque steer from the front end as to be expected, but the chassis and the way you actually drive this car copes with that really, really well. It's obviously not insane amounts like you would get in other cars, but there is slight torque steer. But I've said that in the past. We did a hybrid turbo Mark 7 GTI a few years ago. It was a manual one though. And I felt that was just the most visceral experience you could get in a newer age car. It was harping back to the old school days of old school front wheel drive turboed cars like, you know, series ones and stuff. And I'm not comparing this GTI Club Sport to that, but it gives you the same reaction, the same sort of going down the road, little bit, not scatty, but like you have to hold on for dear life to enjoy this thing and you have to be driving it. And R drives you, you drive a GTI. That's the way I see it. And when you put lowering springs, better tires, better wheels, better brakes, more power into one of these front wheel drive Mark 7 chassis, my God, it, it just comes alive. And yeah, this is just in third gear. The torque you know, just over 400 foot pound of torque. It just comes in and absolutely, yeah, it's just the, the ultimate VW B-Roader. Yes, there'll be a lot of people out there like, oh, I'll go for a manual one. I would go for this DSG variant. It's so nice to drive. It's so just right. It feels right. And you know, I haven't even spoke about the seats yet. The seats, let's just have a moment about these seats, right? They are the nicest seats VW have ever put in a car, I feel, anyway. The the newer R's don't do this, the GTI Club Sport I drove didn't have this. This is the option to buy your Club Sport in, in my opinion. Yeah, just have a moment over these seats, mate, they're so nice. The whole interior is nice, though. Alcantara steering wheel, black headlining, you know, piano black pretty much everywhere. 
with this digital gauge at the side, it's just such a lovely place to be in here. But yeah, I'm a huge fan of this 482 brake horsepower hybrid turboed GTI Club Sport. Are you? Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are of this car. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe for plenty more content to come. I'll see you all on the next one.